in today's paper, the director, the maestro of the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra, is worried there is so little music appreciation among the new generation, our children, that they figure that we're on the way to the destruction of all symphony orchestras. He sees a time where there'll be no more symphonies because we've swallowed such dirt. We've refused, absolutely refused. We've been raised on a diet of dirt and we've substituted it for pearls. Dirt for pearls. That's all I can say. That's the contrast. Isn't that something? Yes. And so John Nelson, who took uh, Solomon's place when I was in Indiana, it was Dr. Solomon, great, great uh, maestro, was worried about this. But you see, we have very few composers now. We have almost none in the Christian world that's writing like this. This was written how many years ago? In the 30s or 40s? 1930, and we don't know of any composition like it. We, we don't even know about him or where we can get a hold of him or anything. But oh, how wonderful Jesus is. Don't be disheartened. The Holy Ghost revival will change it all. We need it very soon. We need to come to one. Because angels do not sing pop music. <laughs> Hallelujah. Surely I'm glad. Glory. But uh, I can say that there's times when their singing approaches the angelic sound. Glory be to God forevermore. See, we're trying hard around here to help us. I told Dr. Reardon, who's coming the 24th, president of Anderson College, one of the most distinguished men in all of the world, is coming here to be with us at his request, both morning and night. I told him what we were trying to do, counter out, counteract the rock culture. I said, we're trying to give our children an appetite for that which is valuable and that which is excellent. See, we're trying. See, I'm not against all rhythm and I'm not against, I'm afraid to say it, but I'm not against all rock. I'm afraid to say it, but I recognize that, that it's not all in the same category, but we are in a rock culture and I, we're trying desperately to give our children something in Taze Valley Christian School and the School of Arts that they can take through life. This key about being true and being faithful yes. that is in Man of La Mancha. Yes. Probably most everybody here, musical or not, can tell that God has been doing something wonderful in and through our choirs. Yes. Both choirs, but particularly this choir. Oh, that's right, yes. And we observe that now, all praise is to the Lord. This is the work of Jesus. Yes. And it's a work in the hearts of our people. But as we are longing for, praying for, trusting for oneness here in our church, yes. we see that in our choir rehearsals, yes. we are making steps toward oneness. Now, yes. we haven't sung this song for months and I, I months. Think of it. They only faltered once, just when the men started in the second part, there was a faltering there. It's because they've not practiced in a long, long time. Then they, then they got a hold of it. It's been months and months, yes. Now, many, if not most, of the songs that we sing in services are not fresh practiced. No, no. And but the work of the Lord that's happening and making the good music come out is a work in the hearts and these principles that go from one song to another song to another song. And so my heart right there. the choir's faithfulness in attending the rehearsals, God's moving us to oneness. And I'm sure, see, remember a long time ago, the Holy Spirit told you folks about um, the Sunday school classes is where it's happening. Yes. Well, yes. we're a musical Sunday school class, perhaps. That is exactly, I know this. But is this true. is what's happening with us, and it's, it's spiritual, and it's musical, and it has such meaning. But if we as a congregation can get hold of, if we as a choir can get hold of, that it's the faithfulness to just be there. You know, it's not that we come all rearing to sing or all victorious. It's not that we arrive that way. It's just that we arrive. We can arrive bloody and scarred if we'll just arrive. <laughs> then God 
it's like we're there for him to do that work with. And the need for all of us to be here. You notice I'm looking at you instead of out. <laughs> but if we could all just get a hold of I'm trusting, how beautiful this result is being. I'm trusting for my sake, if you love me at all, for you to be at your best when this distinguished gentleman comes, that you'll all be for faithful to indeed. choir rehearsals, yes. both in the youth and in the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. or, in, or in that meeting, somebody's going to jump the traces. Now, right. you do it every once in a while, and uh, Sally doesn't call names, but she'll say, oh, if they'd been at rehearsal, that yes. wouldn't have happened. It's true. Because you don't do that when you get acquainted with it. And some of you it will jump the traces at the wrong time, and we'll wish we hadn't have done it. it. And it's because we've not been faithful to practice, you see. And see, again, that's not to the specific song. It's just that we're coming to a oneness and we know how to work together some yes, wonderful way. So and I trust wonderful. everybody in the place knows I'm not bragging on oh, the flesh. This oh. is a work of God. Yeah. And we can see that That's this right. is a parallel that applies to the whole body. Right. Young people, we started, when you started, there was such glory in your singing. And only in recent times has that sharpness, that penetrating yes. power been in your singing. That's been because of the work of God in your heart, see? And the well, attendance yes, is different. Yes, it's the work of God. Otherwise, it puts a, there's a dullness over it, even though you've been excellent in singing. Now, the choir, God has worked with them. Mm -hmm. And spiritually, it's showing up. It's yes. showing up in their work technically. But all oh, the power, by the way, Dee told me this week, or I was, or was heard from her, she said that when the sanctuary choir sings, she cries. It, the thing that gets her the most is when the sanctuary choir sings. That's what she told me. She said, that tears her up. See, she's a very sensitive person. I thought I'd tell you that. Dee Trent, who's been with us the last two Sundays, Donna's here, been with us four, but it, it's the sanctuary choir that gets a hold of the most. Isn't that wonderful? By God's grace, this is what she said. Where's Pam? Pam, this is right. This is true, by God's grace. All right. Now you say, well, do you have services like this all the time? We've never had a service like this before. Do you get in there and work these principles over? No. Sometimes it just flows through. Sometimes I preach on Sunday night. There'll never be another service like this. But this has been a valuable service. I've worked hard. And we've worked hard together by God's grace. And I, I'm happy and I wish that we could all respond in a positive way. I tell you, the best classes I had in college were like this. And the old lazy stuff that slid by, I didn't even want to go back to that class. And brother, when we got in and we worked at it, it put something in me for the future. Isn't that something? It wasn't always pleasant in the service, but God helped. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, choir. You may go down. Thank you for this beautiful number. We wanted to give this to the Morgans and to Jesus. <laughs> now, I'm either very dense, blind, or both by what I find on this paper. I've been sitting here an entire service and did not know that Bob Tullis was in this service. He is sitting right here. Why didn't somebody come whisper in my ear? Did anybody know he was here? And you did. And you didn't tell me? And Kim Cloyd from Houston, Texas. Is this, and if I read this right, you two are engaged. That's great. Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Did you know that I didn't know you were here? I saw her once. And I thought, well, somebody's sitting there with Bob. I didn't know who it was. Did you get my letter? Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad I responded. I'm so glad I responded. What, Bob, tell us, are we glad to see you? You mean there's people in this congregation that knew that Bob was here and you didn't get word to me? If, and it weren't for the head usher, I'd have gone through this entire service? Folks, don't you love me more than that? <laughs> Beth said, I... <laughs> Bob, I'm so glad you're here. I think they should have a hand for an engagement. Well, 
my goodness. But you know what? Are, are, are you studying for, to be a minister of music there? I thought when I found out by the note. See, I looked at her, but I don't always look over individual faces. I've got quite a responsibility on my hands for a service. So I don't pay attention a lot of times to who's in the audience. In fact, sometimes it's best for me not to do it. Just try to obey God. But I, I, I thought, after I thought about what I had said, I thought about uh, Miss Morgan being here. I haven't got her name quite right, so I'm calling her Miss Morgan. That's what she is. I thought about her being here, and I thought about all I said, and I thought about your studying to be a minister of music. And I said, oh, Jesus, while the choir was singing, I said, you've arranged that for Bob. You've, you've been speaking to Bob tonight so that when he goes out into the music world, into the world of the church and music, that God will have uh, uh, the attitude of quality on his heart. He'll work hard in his education to be the best minister of music in all of the church of God, by God's grace. Not for prideful purposes, but because the Savior is worthy, because God is faithful. And here he is right here, and I am delighted. My, my, you weren't here this morning, I hope. Boy, I'm glad. Glory to God. <laughs> when he first went to Houston and I found it in my uh, backlog of letters and wrote him, Ruth just typed a letter, wrote him just the other day and am I glad I did. I said, I better get a letter to him before he gets out of that first year. And here he is. Are you home for the summer? No, I'm just home for a couple of weeks. Home for a couple of weeks. Well, we're delighted. Yeah. And I'd just like to say one thing real quick. Yeah, bring that microphone up. Um, the way God worked this out was just beautiful because God brought me all the way from St. Paris, Ohio to meet Kim in Houston, Texas, and she's from Lexington, Kentucky. <laughs> That's great. That's great. And Mom and Bill was here last time. They were saying how I asked Mom one time in the last semester to come home. Do you remember how when I called her up and was crying because I was so upset and I asked her if I could come home and she said no. I remember. Had she not have said no. Listen to this. Had she not have said no. I wouldn't be engaged to Kim Cloyd today. Thank God for a mother that's like my mother. Amen. That's wonderful, Bob. We're sure glad you're here. Kim, how marvelous. You're from Lexington, so you're our neighbor. You're pretty close to us, and we're glad about that. Oh, may the Lord bless your marriage. May it be a good one, and may you be joined of him, and may you really become one by God's wonderful grace. Praise the Lord. What a delight. See, I've gone through this whole service and didn't know you were in the place. And look down, I saw you. I said, oh, there's, Bob's brought a couple with him, or brother, Jack here. And don't you tell me if you knew that he was here. Because you know me well enough to know that I didn't know it. And you were letting me hang. Don't do that to me anymore if it weren't for the head usher. Did any of you fellows know who was that down here? Dad, none of you knew Bob was here? Boy, you better say no. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's going to be a situation here. <laughs> That's great. I'd already thought of it and was going to say that. I was going to say, well, don't feel bad. And I was going to say exactly what Gavin said. Because it, it was arranged for him too. You see, he was listening carefully. He and his precious fiance, they were listening carefully to all I had to say. Wonderful, isn't it? Glory be to God. Bob, how wonderful to have you and Kim here. We're grateful, and I tell you, it was a great surprise. I felt so terrible at first, but I got to thinking about it, and I thought just what he thought, that the Lord worked in a special way here. See, Jesus will do this because, see, he may, she, this couple may be headed for very important places in their life. So what's been said and done tonight, she is quite a gift to anybody's life. Because I don't know, do you know of a Sunday night service like this hardly anywhere? Well, I don't hardly know of anything much like this. And uh, I trust you will be encouraged and follow the Lord. Well, we're going to close with singing. And then... Perhaps last Jeannie's song will be last, but we'll sing some hymns and then we're going to have her song. And See, the night's young. Isn't it great to start at 6.30? We've got time to work through it and be happy. I hope you haven't started any, any TV watching on Sunday night. Because if you do, I'm sure God's going to run it. 
I don't know what goes on on Sunday night. Not even when I go home from here. I don't know. Once in a while, I'll flip something on, see if there's a news special or something like that. But aren't you glad that God just helps us? We can come and relax, enjoy, worship God, learn, work together, and uh, be blessed in our soul. Stephen, let's sing. Uh, you've got the next number here. Let's sing uh, 242. All right. 242. <laughs> 